Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and recently I got a chance to go on vacation to Korea and Japan, and as always, there was a massive LEGO adventure in any place that I go on vacation to. So for this first video, we will be taking a look at all the different LEGO shopping experiences that I got to experience in Tokyo, Japan. This was actually kind of the second half of my trip. I went to Korea first, but honestly, there were more LEGO related things to do in Japan, so I figured this would make the more interesting video to start with, and do stay tuned to the Duck Bricks channel because I'll be publishing a Lego Korea, specifically in Seoul, shopping experience very, very shortly, so do go check that out if you want to hear more. I actually was able to go to a Lego convention in Asia as well, the Brick Korea convention. I just put out a video on that, but now it's time to take a look at what Japan had to offer in terms of Lego shopping. Now, Tokyo is actually pretty infamous for having a lot of really interesting, odd used toy stores or older toy stores. I've seen a lot of stuff pop up on Twitter and online of people finding the craziest things in Japan. So I was very, very excited to kind of check it out when I went and see exactly what they had to offer. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I think I was a little bit disappointed or maybe I just happened to own everything already because the very few rare items I did find, I already did own. So it wasn't that exciting of a trip for me in terms of the haul, but it was a really good experience just finding random old discontinued sets like two copies of the Captain Rex's ATT sealed in the box for retail price. That was really cool seeing that still on store shelves, just at a random toy store, like not even a specialty used one or old one, just at basically a random one. So there were a lot of interesting things to be found. I hope you do enjoy this look at my Lego shopping experience in Tokyo, Japan. Let's go. So over the past December of 2022, I got a chance to visit Japan and Korea. I'd been wanting to go back for a long time since the last time I was there was around 2019 for Korea, and last time I was in Japan was, must have been 2015 or 14 or even before that. So it had been a long time. I've already put out a video on my experience at the LEGO convention Brick Korea in Seoul, and a LEGO Korea shopping video will be coming very soon, but I wanted to focus this video in on Japan and the many unique LEGO items it had to offer. First of all, after getting to Japan, it was very cool of celebrity Chris Pratt to greet me as I entered the airport. Very, very nice. But there were quite a few more things on my mind than meeting celebrities, because of course, I was here to do some great LEGO shopping as well, not just meet the famous folks. The first item on my list when I visited Japan was this very interesting store, Mandarake Shibuya. This was the classic Japanese collectible store. I had heard from other folks in the LEGO community that if you wanted to find rare, used, or discontinued LEGO, this was the place to get it. So you can imagine I was beyond excited. Located in the Shibuya district of Tokyo, this was the first place that I went to as soon as I got to Japan, and even just going down into the store was quite an interesting experience. You see, the store is located underground, and you had to take many flights of stairs, as you saw in the beginning, just to get down to the store itself. And once you're in, this was a total labyrinth. There were so many different unique things on sale and on display here that I actually had a lot of trouble finding the Lego. Usually I have kind of a Lego sense when it comes to finding Lego in any store. I can locate any Lego as soon as I need to, but here I'm gonna have to admit, I was getting a little turned around. My, my Lego sense was not tingling, so I did have to ask them to locate the Lego for me, and lo and behold, I was able to come across the Lego section, where... I'm gonna be completely honest, very unfortunately, I didn't find anything, like anything of interest. Okay, there was one thing of interest, but I already owned it, so basically nothing of interest to me. And it wasn't that they had a ton of rare things and I just had them all already, the selection was honestly just not that good. Maybe it was already picked over, maybe it was because people, LEGO fans like me, had basically scoured this place and wiped it clean in terms of any rare LEGO items to be had. Because when I went, there seemed to be a lot of rare items on display, there were a lot of rare toys, a lot of rare Star Wars toys as well, but when you got to the LEGO section, there just weren't really any interesting sets available. I think other than a few very rare items, which we'll talk about later on, and we're getting there, I think the oldest item that was like boxed was a Brickhead's Harry Potter set from 2018. So it wasn't really that special. I'm gonna be honest, I was a little bit let down. This was the place that I was probably the most excited to visit out of all of the places in Japan. It was legendary. I'd seen other LEGO YouTubers cover videos on it saying, oh, there's so many crazy things to see here and showcasing some of the insane LEGO items. 
But the rarest one was this right here, which I mean, we're getting back to it, but it was that very rare Star Wars Imperial Inspection Box, which the camera just passed there. Otherwise, there wasn't really anything too crazy here, which again, was a little disappointing because I was expecting a lot more when it came to this store. Easily the most interesting section to me were these bagged poly bags on the wall, the rarest one there being the special old discontinued LEGO Star Wars TC4 poly bag that was like the red protocol droid. I would have gotten it if I didn't already have it, but that was easily the most special thing to see right at the front there. But after digging through all the poly bags, they had some monthly mini model builds from the US, which I thought were weird. Like, were those traded in by tourists? I don't know. That was very interesting, because I don't, I didn't know they did those in Japan. Maybe they did, but yeah, monthly mini model build poly bags, but for the most part, nothing super special there. The TC4 poly bag was the most interesting, and it was also pretty expensive, so I chose not to get it. But beyond that, the rarest, and I, I admit this is a very rare set, the rarest item that the store had to offer was set number 7264, Imperial Inspection, and it was selling for what I believe was around 150 to 200 US dollars, new and sealed in the box. So that was a pretty fair price, it actually was a little cheaper than the current Bricklink sealed box listing, so that was very cool to see. Unfortunately, I already own the set, so I literally had no reason to get it, and if I were to have gotten it, it would have been impossible for me to transport it back home sealed, so I felt like I should just leave it there so someone else who actually wanted the set could get it. Otherwise, you can see we just passed the LEGO selection there, and there just wasn't much. A lot of Super Mario sets were, okay, that's great, I guess. But yeah, I really, and I really did. I spent like 30 minutes here because I was convinced I was just missing them. But I asked the store employees multiple times. They said the only Lego section was there. In fact, the Imperial inspection set wasn't even with the Lego section. It was kind of off to the side, which made me even more paranoid. In fact, I'm still kind of paranoid that maybe I just missed a really special discontinued Lego section here. Maybe it was just somewhere and I didn't even realize where it was, but and you can see me walking around, I mean, I was really looking, but I just could not find anything. No Lego, no nothing. And it was very hard because a lot of the toys, they had boxes that looked like they might be Lego, or they looked kind of exciting, like, oh, maybe that's an old Lego set, but you go closer and it wasn't. But that was what it was. One thing I will say is the entrance to the store was really cool. You've got this post-apocalyptic metal type thing, and again, as you go down, you have this massive staircase that keeps going down, down, lower into the ground, Really cool lead into a store, I really do appreciate seeing that, and you actually have like bookcases that are lining the staircases as well, so it was a really cool aesthetic of the store, it had a lot of manga and anime comic stuff, so quite a lot of interesting things to see, but of course my focus was on the LEGO, I really wanted to specifically see just the LEGO stuff myself, and unfortunately, that meant there wasn't a ton to actually be seen for my end. The following few photos may be slightly comical, because you can see I was desperately looking for LEGO. The disappointment is beginning to dawn on my face here, as I'm crouched down looking through every single shelf, behind things, above things, going all over, just trying to find more LEGO. Couldn't find any other than this very cool Imperial Inspection, which was very nicely sealed up. There it is, 33,000 yen, which translates to roughly... 251 US dollars, which I think is about or cheaper than the Bricklink average, as far as I can remember, so that was cool to see. You've got like a Captain Salazar Brickheads from 2017, but nothing that's like that interesting here. It really was unfortunate because I was going on Bionicle Twitter and everything and seeing people finding all sorts of crazy like old Bionicle stuff at used stores, I just didn't know what stores there were, so unfortunately I was not able to find them. But from then we had to move on and we went on to the Legoland Discovery Center in Tokyo. Now, there actually is a Legoland Japan. I went a few years ago, but I chose not to go this time because I've been to it before, and it wasn't really any point in getting there just to be able to get that. I was able to get the special Lego store set, which stay tuned at the end of this video for a look at that, because that was one that was delayed forever in the US. It's finally been released, but it was just kind of delayed, so I wanted to get it there. The coolest thing at the Legoland Discovery Center in Tokyo, which was my next stop, I just took the subway there, was that it was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. The Build a Minifigure station had the new January 2023 specialized Build a Minifigure items. So that was really cool. I was able to stock up on those. I'll be showcasing those at the end of this video. I'm sure that you've all seen them now because this video is coming out in like February. I'm recording it in December, but it's scheduled to come out in February or maybe even later. So you've all seen those, but that was really cool to see. 
I think one of the most interesting things in this Legoland Discovery Center was the display of different minifigures they had lining the wall. I asked if I could swap minifigures or if I could purchase any of these because they actually had quite a few rare figures just on this bracket here. Unfortunately, they said no, they're just for display, so sadly I had to leave them behind, but it was really interesting seeing that. One note about Legoland Discovery Centers, not Legolands, but Legoland Discovery Centers, is that unless you are accompanied by a child, you are not allowed to enter them. In that, I was not allowed to enter because I was above the age of like 14 to 16, so unfortunately, until I have a kid of my own, Legoland Discovery Centers are not accessible to me, so I was not able to see it, which was so sad because I hear they have a bit of a little mini Tokyo mini land, which I would have loved to see, but unfortunately, just was not allowed. It's the same case here in the US. Legoland Parks are totally fine. The rule only applies to Legoland Discovery Centers, which are the little miniature versions of Legolands like this, which you can find inside shopping mall buildings. Over here, you can see a tour of the store. Pretty standard selection of stuff. There were a few strange things though. There were a few random oddities that we could see here. Like the minifig tower, of course you have those unique build a minifigure pieces where here they were very nicely sorted with torsos and legs and specific accessories all partitioned off so that was a really nice thing to see different partitions for each of the things. Of course those were some of these special new pieces which I'm sure most people have seen now, but were new to me at least, being able to see those special recolors, like the white and red dual molded recolor of the recent collectible minifigure series 23 boat piece. You've got the candy cane as well, so all sorts of really nice pieces here. I really enjoyed being able to dig through these, but overall it was fairly standard. Cool to see some of those old display figures on still kind of on display at the Legoland Discovery Center itself though. The pick brick wall was okay, nothing super spectacular here, there were some interesting things to see, but I am not in really any need of particular LEGO bricks, so I did not get anything there. I really like seeing the LEGO 2008 wizard there, that was a cool big sculpture, and they even had a Trolls World 2 of sculpture as well. By far the rarest and most interesting thing, well maybe not the rarest, but the most interesting thing, was a magnet for the Hobbit that came out in like 2013? and it's still there. It was still on store shelves, so that was pretty crazy to see that still being sold. And of course, cool to see all these specialized minifigures on the border here, like the Pyro Vipers and whatnot. I only was allowed to access the shop of Legoland Discovery Center, so that is what I saw. Even though I saw a lot of really cool minifigures here, there are a lot of really special figures here, like some of the Sons of Garmadon minifigures and whatnot, but just couldn't get any of those because they were just on display. Of course, like every single Legoland Discovery Center, they had the massive giraffe mounted outside, which was really nice to see just wandering around the city streets of Tokyo, being able to experience that giraffe. There I am right in front of it. And from there, actually connected to the mall that was part of the Legoland Discovery Center, was a Toys R Us. So in this Toys R Us, you can see a lot of poly bags and pretty much a fairly standard selection of Lego. Again, I own almost or basically every Lego set that is out there in terms of modern stuff, so I really had nothing to buy, to be honest. But it was cool seeing the different displays they had at the Toys R Us here. Contrary to popular belief, Toys R Us is not dead, it is only dead in North America. Actually, specifically, it's only dead in the US. It is still thriving in Canada and Asia especially, and even Europe, so... Toys R Us is still around pretty much everywhere except America, so it was cool seeing all the different displays they had at this Toys R Us location. Loved the Ninjago crystallized display showcasing all of the different sets there. Man, I would kill to have that display case. That is a really cool display case. And this was one of my favorite things, seeing different scales of LEGO vehicles like Speed Champions and City and Friends existing next to each other as a showcase of different LEGO vehicles. Of course, selection is pretty average. Nothing crazy here, nothing discontinued, nothing brand new either. I was really looking, hoping to find 2023 sets, but alas, they did not have them. Aside from a few discontinued Monkey Kid sets, that was probably the most interesting things they had there. So, it was what it was. Cool to see the Super Mario stuff on display as well, but again, the selection was pretty much just the bog standard LEGO set selection you would come to expect from pretty much any LEGO store in the US. So from there, I figured it was time to move on. For me, big towers and cities are always kind of gimmicky, but I had to check out the Tokyo Skytree because I wanted to catch the sunset and get some amazing pictures of my LEGO minifigures on the Skytree as well. I bring Ninjago figures everywhere I go to take photos of them, so it was cool being able to see that and walk around the temples as well, where this part of the trip is not really about LEGO shopping, but instead LEGO photography, where I got out my LEGO minifigures and we were able to walk alongside the historic gardens and areas of the temples and palaces of the main city streets of Tokyo 
Tokyo, and it was really cool being able to pose my Lego Ninjago minifigures there, like the Sensei Wu minifigure here right in front of a pagoda temple. That was kind of one of the most fun things for me on vacation, was to just be able to pose my minifigures in different exciting scenes just in front of the temples. I guess this doesn't really have much to do with the shopping, but there it was. Specifically, the backdrop you're looking at here is the Sensoji. It is a temple in Asakusa, the area of Asakusa in Tokyo, in Taito City. And it actually dates all the way back to the year 645. It's a Buddhist temple, so very cool to see that historical place. Anyone who watches my live streams knows how much I love food. While I won't talk about food too much in this video, I think my favorite place to eat was a Wagyu Beef Easy. That was a speakeasy, but for Wagyu Beef, where every single item, including the cocktails and drinks, had a little bit of Wagyu Beef sprinkled in. So that was heaven on earth for me. I realize the topic of this video is veering away from LEGO and more into Tokyo stuff, so we're gonna refocus stuff and get back into things because while I did do a lot of fun things in Tokyo, this is not a trip vlog, it is a LEGO shopping in Tokyo, Japan vlog. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to veer away from the many crazy and exciting and cool things that I actually was able to do in Tokyo and refocus on the next LEGO location, which was, you can see that blue sign right here, the Toy Park. So I visited the district of the Ginza area in Tokyo at night. This is specifically the Hakuhinken Toy Park, and it was pretty interesting because I think I found some of the rarest LEGO items here compared to any else. First of all, very cool to see that old LEGO logo there, which suggests that this store has been here for a while, and the most exciting thing to me here was that this store got more and more interesting the more time you spent in it. You see, there is a massive Lego castle, just a printout, just no, no sets, but it was a printout of the actual building on display there. So that was a build for the actual toy store. There was a Lego build of the toy store itself, the Hakuhinken Toy Park there. I thought that was really cool how they actually had a build for it. And then you started to see older Lego sets as you peeled back the layers. I think the funniest thing to me here was seeing multiple copies of the CCBS Ray. I'm sure there's a photo that I have in this video at some point, it's going to come up, of multiple copies of it. But when you enter the store, for the most part, it looks like fairly modern sets. But the more sets you peel back, the more interesting things you find. Like two copies of the Captain Rex's ATTE from Rebels. I already owned the set, so I had no need to get it. But it was really cool being able to see two of those just on store shelves. So that was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. They also had a lot of copies of the Ideas Adventure Time set. Ah, there it is. <laughs> the army of CCBS Ray I found in a toy store in 2022, basically 2023 at that point. Very, very funny how they still had so many of those. But yeah, they also had a lot of the Adventure Time idea sets too. One thing I did, I kind of rearranged the store shelves after I went out. I put the older stuff at the front, maybe encouraging people to get those. But just as I was about to leave the Toy Park store, I discovered there was something very, very special just tucked away. Not anything that I bought, I'm gonna preemptively say it now. I didn't have anything to buy, so it wasn't the most interesting thing because, again, I just had all, everything already, pretty much. But it's interesting for folks who do want to visit this place because hidden away underneath the shelves of the actual toy displays were shelves and shelves of pretty older discontinued LEGO sets that were not on display, which I thought were very, very cool. So first off, let's take a closer look at the mock which actually replicates the city street and the toy store itself. Looks like it was built circa 2011, if I had to guess. A lot of the minifigures are interesting, like the 2002 Guild Wars Lockhart and an Exo Force figure. You've got the 2011 car sets, the 2008 castle sets on display, as well as a Knight's Kingdom figure, Knight's Kingdom 2, Jayco there. So that was really cool. But again... The coolest thing were as you delve deeper into the shelves themselves, they had these pull-out shelves underneath the main shelving areas that actually showcase a lot of older sets. Of course, tucked away were discontinued stuff like the LEGO Movie 2 sets and hidden side stuff, so lots of great things to see here. You can see me rummaging around trying to find old stuff. There's another hidden side set, the fairground set back there, so great to see that. And the LEGO Movie Sistar Starship is actually a really good set in my opinion. So lots of hidden side, lots of LEGO Movie 2 just tucked away. You never would see them if you just didn't look behind all of the modern sets. Of course, moving aside some of the new Ninjago Crystallized stuff, there's the big hidden side mansion or the school, which is a really good set. I mean, hidden side was a pretty underrated theme. That Chinese New Year Temple Fair, which is discontinued now as well, so cool to see that. And then another Captain Rex's ATTE there. So if you are on the hunt for the set and you happen to be in the Tokyo area, go check this out because they had two of them. So they should have a lot for you. But yeah, look down here. If you look down here, 
I just set aside some of the friend sets. I was really looking behind. There's some old Unikitty sets from 2018. Nothing that crazy or interesting. Again, I, I own all of these already, but I just thought, okay, it was cool to see some older stuff here, like the Party Time set from Unikitty. But there are these Lego logos underneath all the shelves, and if you pull out on them, they're actually drawers. So if you actually look closer, you can find a lot of very rare and interesting things just hidden away in the back. You really have to dig. Like, this is something you have to dig and find out. So let's take a look at that right now. Here's an example of just one of the many shelving units there. You can see all those CCBS rays. They had the Ideas Adventure Time sets, and sure, some of the sets are modern sets that were just kind of stored away and squirreled away here, but it was crazy seeing just so many old random sets, like all those poor CCBS rays. Still at retail price. I mean, they were still like 20 bucks, so I didn't really need any. Interesting seeing the, an ad for the remote control Batmobile, but not the Batmobile itself. But you really have to just dig in here. Again, a lot of these sets are modern sets, so not everything was discontinued. But this was very, very cool being able to see here. That was the old Captain Marvel set from 2019, I think. So that was cool to see that still just hidden away, tucked away there. And every single one of the shelving areas with a Lego sign on it was actually hiding some older Lego sets. So it was really cool being able to see that, like the Micro Fighters from The Last Jedi, those are pretty old, that's like 2018. So that was cool to see. You can see I'm getting more frantic as I'm looking here. Like I'm getting more and more excited and trying to wonder what I'll find. So that was great to see. Unfortunately, I will say I didn't really find anything super special. You can see all the sets that they had if you are curious and checking it out. But you can see I'm looking around here trying to find any items that are interesting here. But yeah, cool to see those additional shelving areas because I really wanted to dig around and see what special items can I find here just tucked away in this store itself. Personally, one of the coolest sets for me, which was, again, a set I already owned, but this one right here was the LEGO City Arctic set, which was really cool. That comes with the Mammoth. It's the only set to have the Mammoth, so that was a very cool set to still see there. I think that's from 20... 2018? 2019? It, 2018, I think. That was a 2018 set, so... Cool to see that still on store shelves, so if you do want to get the Mammoth, I mean, all of these are basically at retail price, so if you are in the area, you can definitely check that out. And that made me kind of want to keep digging. You just, the thing is here, you have to keep digging. You have to keep looking behind sets, because you never know what's going to be hidden behind stuff that's really special. Rarest thing was probably the Captain Rex's ATTE, but again, just dig, and it, you might find a set that you don't have. I didn't, because I have most sets already, but I was able to find a lot of interesting things nonetheless. After channel mascot Duckety had a terrifying T-Rex encounter, it was time to leave this toy store behind, where as you go up the stairs you can see that this was a really big store. Look at how many floors there are to this building alone. But yeah, that was that one toy store. I didn't get anything because I already owned everything, but it was interesting seeing some older sets from 2015 on store shelves. The next location I went to was an actual Lego store in the Tokyo train station subway. So this is in the Tokyo station, this is within their subway, this is right at the main Tokyo station hub. So cool to see a Lego store just as you're going in the subway being able to experience a Lego store right then and there was just a surprise and a really nice thing that I was just walking through the subway going to my next destination and I was like, hold up, wait a minute, there's a Lego store in here. So very, very cool to see that. Again, I didn't buy anything because I already own everything. Like, I basically own everything there is to get currently out of LEGO's current product catalog, but I did like seeing some of their unique displays like the Tokyo lettering atop a bus, and there's the outside of the storefront. It was just sitting in the subway itself, which was very, very cool. Of course, it was always cool to see more interesting LEGO displays. Wow, that's not a very flattering photo of me entering the store. I don't know why they took that photo of me just like pushing my glasses up. But there you can see it. That was me right in front of the storefront. Very cool. And you can see my walk up to the LEGO store itself. This was just going through the subway station. Look how clean and nice it is compared to what we have in the US. Come on, America has to step up their public transit game, seriously. But there's that LEGO store storefront. It's just right up there. So cool just seeing a LEGO store in the subway station, and no, I'm not saying that America needs to step up their public transit game just because there was a LEGO store in the Tokyo station, although that certainly helps its cause. I'm saying that because it's just objectively better as well. So, this was a really cool experience. What did I even buy? What am I pur- oh, I purchased some minifigures. I'm, I'm seeing these videos as I'm narrating, so I saw myself at the checkout counter wondering what I was buying. But yeah, I got some of the special minifigures like in the little pack. Nothing super crazy though. Basically standard store selection, but it was cool to see, again, Toy Store in the subway. Not 
something you see every day for sure. And LEGO stores typically are just confined to malls and whatnot, so I didn't really enjoy that. Found it funny how they actually accidentally had some minifigures from older sets like the Legacy Ultrasonic Raider and Kai's Fire Dragon just mixed in with the crystallized stuff, presumably because those displays originally had them. They were also advertising kids to see the Ninjago TV show on Netflix or YouTube, which is more advertising than the show gets in the US, so that was cool to see. And overall, it was a fun experience just encountering a LEGO store during my travels. This is one of the only places, actually, during one of these video tour trip things where I just happened across it. I did not know it was there, and I just got lucky and was going in the train station and then just walked past it. So that was really cool. But then from there, the next destination was one of the most famous areas of Tokyo. I'm sure that when many folks think of Tokyo, this is the area that you think of, and this was a really busy city street. Specifically, this is the Hibiya district. I was able to visit one of the most famous stores here, which kind of had a duck motif, so that was cool to see. No Lego though, so we're gonna go right past that. And it was a really unique experience being able to experience the nightlife and culture of Tokyo. Again, not really the focus of this video, but you know, just wanted to pepper in some stuff there. Honestly, with that, we've about come to a conclusion here. Got a chance to visit Disney Sea, of course, gotta see that. And we even got to pay a visit to old Chris Pratt's house, which I certainly was much happier to visit here in Japan and not in the US when apparently the lines are very, very bad and people are just packed in like sardines. Here it was actually pretty maneuverable. I still had to wait three hours for the Bowser ride, but I mean, it wasn't that bad. Anyways, I believe that about sums up my LEGO shopping experience in Tokyo. I'm gonna be completely honest, it was not as crazy as many of the other places. I often find the strangest and most obscure used LEGO stores in places that I go to around Europe and whatnot. And here in Tokyo, it was kind of standard for the most part. I got to see some LEGO stores, Legoland Discovery Center, a Toys R Us, a big toy store. The strangest thing was going to Mandrake Shibuya and being able to experience the kind of like, I wouldn't say it's a used LEGO store, it was more of like a discontinued or old market for old toys. Coming across that sealed Imperial Inspection set was very cool, but again, no reason for me to get it sealed, and especially not at that price of $250, because one, I own the set, and two, if I would have had to transport it back, I would have had to throw out the box, because that was not going to fit in my suitcases with all the other stuff I got. So overall, it was a fun time, lots of cool and crazy things to see in Tokyo, like uh, you can see me just chilling here underwater in Joypolis, <laughs> but overall a fun time, and now let's take a look at the hall. One thing as we get into this haul segment, I filmed this portion of the video shortly after my trip. I had assumed I was going to make the Japan and Korea visits one video, so here is a combination of stuff that I got in both Japan and Korea, but we'll be cutting out the Korea stuff, I'll put that in the eventual Korea LEGO shopping video, and focus in on just the Japan items here. So without further ado, let's jump in right now to the haul. It isn't a trip, well, anywhere, without some sort of LEGO haul. But the thing is, for this particular trip, to be completely honest, I didn't really even get that much stuff. The only actual set that I got was this. And this is not even exclusive to Japan or Korea. This, however, was not released in the United States for a while. It was supposed to come out last year in 2022. For some reason, it got delayed and it was only released everywhere except for North America. As of right now, as of the time of this recording, it still is not available at the US shop at lego.com, so... I figured, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get it because I don't know when it's going to appear at lego.com in the US. It was a little bit more expensive than what I would have paid if I got it in the US. I got it at the Legoland Discovery Center, but you know what, it wasn't too bad because I definitely did want this set. So we'll take a look at this first because this is the most substantial thing that I did get. This was again a set that released in 2022 and it is a little building representation of a Lego store or at least a modern Lego store. One thing I really like are the inclusion of the stickers which have these really nice Lego prints in them which actually look like something you would see in the store and of course when you open it up there were a ton of stickers referencing actual LEGO sets, plus this is the most modern representation of an actual LEGO store that we've basically gotten to date. We'll look at the top floor first, where you can see there is a slot for the minifigure factory, and that's what it basically looks like on other big flagship stores now, like the one in New York or the one in London, so really cool to see that. You've got little centerpiece for actually getting minifigs, a castle and a train on display. Not really sure what exactly these are supposed to represent, if they are supposed to represent any particular LEGO sets. I mean, maybe you can see this as the Disney castle or the one that came with the Disney train and station, but yeah, you know what, it's kind of more generic stuff. Here, however, I really like the inclusion of these stickers because they are all references to actual LEGO sets. You can see the Legacy X1 Ninja Charger there, you have the Legacy Coles kind of a boulder blaster up there, 
And then this middle sticker is actually a reuse of a sticker that has appeared in a lot of other LEGO sets previously that are LEGO sets of LEGO sets, where it's a little Ninjago type build there. Opening this upwards, though, you can actually remove this here. One thing I really find is interesting is how they asked you to insert studs into the hole here. These actually stay in because of the way they're mounted. But yeah, you're supposed to put little studs into the little hole there to pick a brick, which is very cool. Moving on, though, the interior uh, can actually be opened up. So this whole thing opens up and you have a whole interior here. You have a little nice display for minifigures to actually play around in. And once you have that closed up, you can see like their heads are protruding out from the animal bodies. You can kind of see stuff like that at other stores. So it's cool to see that on here, though. I really like these stickers because look, look at these. Here you actually have references to a lot of other Technic and Idea sets. You have the Lamborghini supercar, you've got the, the motorized dump truck, and as well as one of the remote control kind of tank-like things. And for LEGO Ideas, you have the dinosaur skeletons, the grand piano, and the typewriter, plus even some creator set references and LEGO Friends, where you have the houses and the cars and even the speedboats. So very cool to see that. Some even more references here with the creator house. I'm going to remove this so you can see another city reference on the side there. So these are all actual supposed to represent like actual Lego sets, which is very cool. There's, I guess, the checkout counter. It's really crowded in there. You can barely fit one minifigure there, but you know, it does have it. And then you have pick a brick with a little bit of a glass display case as well. And this is, again, really cool because this does really feel like an actual Lego store. The only thing that I kind of wish they included here was maybe just a way to close up the entire building. I found it really cool how it was closed up on all four sides. Like this is a full on building that you can use in your Lego city, but then they kind of ran out of budget and they didn't have a staircase. They just have a ladder there, which is not something you'll see in an actual Lego store and just left the back of it blank. So would have been cool if the set was just a little bit bigger. They could have given it a roof, just a flat tile for the roof and then just something on the back here to close it up. But you know, I understand that they were working with limited space and I like it for what it is. And also this can rotate outwards. So on the front of the box, it looks like this. So you get even more bang for your buck when it's laid out like this. Moving on from that, though, we can take a look at some of the other weird stuff that I got. I mean, none of these are actual, like, standard LEGO sets. In fact, most of this stuff is, like, literature and random books and stuff like that. But they're interesting and they are LEGO, so I figured, why not? I did want to get them. Got a copy of their catalog in um, Japanese here, which is always cool to see. I mean, it's always interesting. Oh, good, good. Flip right to the Ninjago page. That's uh, pretty, pretty themingly accurate there. But yeah, you can see... Um, the different retailer catalog, it's funny because a lot of leaks do come from catalogs like these which are sent out to retailers early, so here's uh, one of them in person. We don't have these in the US in this format, but we do have this exact catalog in Europe, so every time I go to Europe, almost every LEGO store will have a catalog like this. I wish they had this in the US, but maybe people aren't too focused on print media in the US, which is why we don't have them. We've got this thing, which was an Easter brochure. I found it interesting how they had like an Easter focused brochure here, but yeah, you know what? That's what it is. Maybe this is just a generic rebuild the world thing, but then I don't know why everything is so Easter bunny focused, unless it's for Lunar New Year with the bunny. That that could be it. Um, one thing I found was really cool though, is that they actually had combo models across different themes. So this here was saying like, if you combine a Ninjago set, the legacy car, uh, city fire truck, a city tractor and a classic brick box, you can get this. And this one is asking you to combine a city and a friend set to get this. Yeah, I like that. That's really interesting. I mean, I, I'm actually a big fan of doing alternate models and combo models, and I find that to be really cool. So that was what drew me to this catalog. I wish they would have posted more images of alt models, because those, those were really cool. But you have some other inspirational models that you can see here at the beginning. Oh yeah, they did. Oh, these are all alt models. I didn't even realize that. Okay, well yeah. You can combine some city... Oh, wow, these are like older sets, too. There's like the Heart Lake Party Bus. Interesting, interesting, very interesting. Yeah, well, you can see some alt models here, but that's how it goes. Pretty interesting stuff. Wish they did more stuff like that. So the minifigures, I wanted to get because there were a lot of specialized minifigures that appeared for the first time. Uh, I mean, folks now can, can see this all around. Like, th these are common figures, and you can get them at any build a minifigure station at any lego store but back in december this was like the first time i was seeing a lot of these pieces so i am trying to collect all the exclusive minifigures from the build mini fixation so i said why not let's let's try and get them so here you can see 
first batch here got these at Legoland Discovery Center, and these are mostly like exclusive prints. So a lot of these minifigures have exclusive prints, exclusive recolors. They're all very special. Like this dog is new in this color. That's uh, brand new. If you aren't aware, LEGO Build a Minifigure does do these special exclusive things, which I think is very cool. I really do like when they do exclusive, like exclusive dual molded hair pieces and recolors. That's always very cool. So let's just get these opened up here. I didn't manage to get all of them. There were like a couple that I still needed. Is that taped on? Okay, weird. Um, yeah, but you know, I got, I got most of the ones that I needed. These are just the newest ones that you can get. So. You can see them right here. A nice new panda outfit. Again, new print for the panda. New torso, new print for the panda uh, head here. And then also a new print on the interior, inside of the face. Most of these minifigures are all brand new. And they're almost, they're like one step below collectible minifigures. They're not quite as detailed, but they feel like CMFs that would have come out like a few years ago. So it's, it's interesting because they mostly have new prints and stuff like that. The bunny's new and blue, so that's cool to get. Torso, I love the torso on this one. The torso is really good. And these are the official configurations as well. Like these are, these are like specifically the configurations the figures are supposed to be in for the most part. Some of them are not, but for the most part they are. Um, let's see, we've got another pack right here. Yeah, this is all new. So this is like the crayon figure. So that, this is a new color for the crayon, which came out for the Lego Movie 2. You even have a special new torso print as well, so that's pretty cool, like the skull there. Oh, I got two of these Boy With Bunnies. I must have forgotten, because I got these all at separate times, so I must have forgotten that I got, like, multiple copies. I like how they had the candy cane, which was introduced in the latest collectible minifigure series, and thought that it would be uh, exclusive to that, but apparently not. My favorite one, though, or at least my favorite batch, was here, because they have already recolored the boat. The little tugboat piece that is that was exclusive in black and white for the collectible minifigs, but they've recolored it in red and white. And yeah, there it is. Really cool to see recolors of specialized collectible minifig pieces. Same for the flower piece, new in purple and green. We have the Southwesterner hat in dark green, which did come out for the Lego Ideas Motorized Lighthouse, but you've also got a similar minifigure here, so it's cool that that isn't locked to a super expensive set. And then they had some of the Christmas themed ones as well, so managed to pick some of those up here. So we've got the Gingerbread Woman. This is all stuff that we have seen before, but it's cool to get it as a build a minifigure option. You have Mrs. Claus here, super simple, plain red skirt piece, which I do like. And it looks like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm sure that this piece already exists, but the donut piece. And why did I get two of these? I don't know. Weird. Okay, well. We got, we got some more. I don't know what... These these are not official figures. I think I was just messing around and, like, getting extra stuff. But the, the gingerbread woman with a bowl this time... Oh, yeah, I wanted to stock up with the Ninjago movie bowls because I had a ton of those. Uh, these figures here are just because they told me I had to make figures and I couldn't just get individual pieces. So I, I made myself make figures, but it was interesting seeing the Harumi print from uh, Sons of Garmadon being offered. Lastly, there was just, like, one more minifigure here that I got. They gave it to me in a bag, which was interesting. But, yeah, I wanted to stock up... And the dark green hat piece, as well as get more of the, the panda stuff. So, there you have it. That is the haul for Japan and Korea. So, not, not anything super crazy, but a few exclusive items here and there. All right, and with that, we have summed up my experience shopping for Lego in Tokyo, Japan. A lot of really interesting Lego shops and experiences from the Mandarake Shibuya store to the Legoland Discovery Center to the Lego store in the Tokyo Station. There were a lot of great places to buy Lego in Japan. And while I didn't get that much stuff because I honestly already owned most of the things that I found, it was a great place for folks who maybe in the future are going to be visiting Japan. I know a commenter on one of my live streams said they're going very shortly. I think at the end of the month so do hope you enjoy checking out the lego experiences there thank you all so much for tuning into this video and i hope you've enjoyed taking a look at some of the different places that i went to on my trip to tokyo and again stay tuned because i'll be putting out a similar video for seoul in korea as well so that was a completely different experience full of completely different stores so i hope you enjoy that with that, we have summed up this video. Thank you so much for tuning in, and be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks, and bye for now.